The Cube presents Ignite 22. Brought to you by Palo Alto Networks. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Las Vegas. It's The Cube. We are live at Palo Alto Networks Ignite 22. This is day one of two days of Cube coverage. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, we've had great conversations today, talking with executives. The partner ecosystem is evolving, it's growing at Palo Alto Networks. Going to be digging into that next. Well, we heard a lot of talk about you know, Palo Alto, you know, the goal, $100 billion you know, market cap company, and, and to me, a way, and I think a critical way in which you get there is partner with the ecosystem, because you can't do it alone. Absolutely. The power of many versus the resources of one. Agree, completely agree. We've got Carl Soderlund with us, SVP of North America Ecosystem Sales at Palo Alto Networks. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for having me, it's great being here. So here we are, day, full, first full day of the conference. Actually yes. started yesterday with the Partner Summit. Yes. Give the audience a flavor of the Partner Summit. Who was there? What was talked about? Sure. What's the current voice of the partner these days? Yeah, great question. So we had 150 partners from around the globe representing all of our different routes to market. And for us, our partner community is expanding. We work with system integrators, we work with GSIs, we work with service providers, distributors, traditional value-added resellers, so it was a whole host of partners that were there. It was a C-level audience, and we really talked about the direction of where we're going as a company, how they can continue to invest with us and have greater success long term. And so from a voice of the partner standpoint, what they're here to do is share with us where they want to engage more, how we can enable them to be successful. You talked about the power of one versus the community. We're really looking at a segment of the marketplace right now for us to scale and hit our aspirational goals. We can't do it with Palo Alto Network employees. We have an employee base of 12,000 people. If you take our ecosystem, it's over 100,000 employees. So if we can get them aligned and selling and motivated, it's going to be a good day for all of us. So what are they telling you? Where do they want to spend their time? Where do they want to add value? Where are they winning? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a transformation that's going on right now in the partner community. What's happening is a lot of partners going, that are transitioning from what would be traditional transactional partners or resale partners to being services led. Hmm. And the market's driving them there. And what I mean by that is that customers are in a desperate, dire state needing assistance, figuring out and solving these very complex security problems. So if there's a subset of partners out there that have the skill set and capabilities that can come in from a consultative standpoint, help them to you know, develop the structure through deployment, full-blown management, and do life cycle management, that's a tremendous value. I mean, the numbers you hear thrown around in the industry right now is up to seven million uh, security IT jobs right now that are out there. The open headcount is tremendous. People can't hire people fast enough. All of us in the industry are going through and trying to find early in career or college graduates so we can train quickly or cross train from other segments to get them into cybersecurity. So if our part of the community can continue to get skilled and expand, it's only going to help. And the cloud is obviously, a, where does the cloud fit in, Carl? Because you know, a lot of the partners, when the cloud really started on the steep part of the S-curve, were like, we have an opportunity here and by the way, if we don't transition our business, we could get commoditized. Yes. So that, you know, that what you were talking about, the transactional, we can help people move to the cloud, and a big part of that has got to be we can secure them in the cloud. Because yes. it's a, a more, in a lot of ways, you know, cloud security is great, but in a lot of ways it adds complexity. Yeah. What are you hearing from the partners? Yeah, so we are fortunate at Palo Alto Networks. When you look across the three largest cloud service provider from a Google, AWS and Microsoft Azure, we're either their number one ISV or absolutely their number one security ISV. So we've got a great uh, relationships with them. Now our partners are coming along and saying, how do we transact, how do we add value? A lot of times that value to your question is wrapping services around it to make sure it's a successful deployment because exactly what you stated, the complexity is an all time high. Mm. So how do we make sure that we can solve a complex problem in a short term while increasing their security posture. And that's really the goal. And so where there's sometimes complexity and mystery, there's opportunity. Yeah. And partners can be profitable in doing that. I wrote a piece once, <laughs> chaos is cash. Cyber <laughs> 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 security, you know, criminals and vendors as well. Yes, yes. Where there is, is challenge and complexity, there is great opportunity. Yeah. Talk about some of the, th the partner program evolution and some of the things that were announced with respect to the Next Wave program just yesterday. Yeah, so at Next Wave, um, the program's been around for 12 years. We constantly are looking to make enhancements, and how we make those enhancements are by going out and speaking with these partners and listening. 
to what they need. So I have the honor to get to represent what their needs are and how we bring it to market for them. So a couple interesting announcements that we made yesterday. First of all, we announced a new structural format for the program, which is really going to allow our different route to markets to have a program that's fit for them. Because in the past, when we were just traditionally a firewall company, when the ecosystem just meant resale, it was an easy model to have. It's complex right now. Sometimes it's resale, sometimes it's influence, sometimes it's services only. We really need to be flexible and credible. So we announced a services only path. So if you are a consulting company, if you are a insurance company, and you want to bring opportunities and leads to Palo Alto Network, and you want to provide the services, but you're not interested in the transaction, you don't want to get involved in that, we now have a pathway for you to support you, to enable you, and candidly to give you recognition within Palo Alto Networks from an alignment standpoint. So we're super excited about that. Uh, as I know, you guys speak quite a bit about the managed services industry. Mm. So it's a red hot area within Palo Alto Networks. One of the needs out there was that all, not all managed service partners are created equally. And so some have fantastic capabilities, some have gaps. We were calling it a P2P, partner to partner program within managed services. So our two managed services partners can actually work together to solve the problem that the end user has and give them a better outcome and fill each other's gaps. So candidly, it's been going on for a while, the partnering, but we've never really recognized it. So we really built a program around it and now are sponsoring and supporting it versus people doing it on a sidebar. So those guys were here in force yesterday. <laughs> yes, sir. Right, and, and so obviously a lot of energy, I'm sure. Yeah. Do you see a day where they're here in force on the show floor? Yeah. And, and, and how do you see that evolving? So they are here in force okay, on the show floor. Talk about Just that. From I, mean, I do here, see a few of them. I'm looking at yeah. AWS, yep. who's our, you know, we are their largest ISV. I'm looking at CDW. We had them on. We who did. is yeah. our, if not largest, second largest partner globally right now and continuing to grow at a rate, well, they will probably be our first billion dollar partner to think about the size and scale of that relationship and where we've come from. Um, I their name, CDW, you they never really thought of CDW, right, as a, yeah. as a security firm. Wow, what a transformation, but please carry on. And, and think about that, let's talk about CDW for a second. Yeah. Think about reach that CDW has. It's a $23 billion organization, and in a way, an inside-out sales model, meaning there's a tremendous reach they have from their inside sales team, and the relationships that they have, traditionally, historically, they were procurement relationships. In a way, and I said this to the CDW team, they were the easy button in the past. Now what they're doing is they made seven acquisitions over the last two years, all of them services oriented. So now they're coming in as a consultative viewpoint and solving a lot of complex problems. And I see Google Cloud right here, another great partner for us that we continue to invest in. We have a great amount of integration and technology integration with them, and so, and those are the three that I'm seeing just looking over my left shoulder, right? If I turn around, I'll probably name five more. So the majority of this room are the partners that fall within our ecosystem today. Yeah, fantastic. So, okay, so what's your vision for where you want to take this ecosystem? Because as I said at the top, I mean, ecosystems are sort of the hallmark of a, I guess you're not a cloud company. See, I think you, of you as a cloud company. As do and, I. And, and so, okay, good. So, and I know you don't own your own public cloud, mm -hmm. You know, your history is you had your own data centers, but, yeah. but you're the security cloud. Yeah. And so a security cloud, any cloud, needs a great ecosystem. So what's your vision for the ecosystem? Let's go, you know, yeah. five plus years out. Sure, you, we start with the end in mind. And what I mean by that is we always start with the end user. What's the end user's needs? The end user today needs flexibility with how they consume the technology. They need help in how they support and deploy the technology. They need guidance in how they plan out for their future and what their growth is. So what we're doing is building a very diverse set of partners in our ecosystem that all have special skills that they bring to the table. So when Nikesh sits up here and talks about being a 10 billion or a 20 billion or a 50 billion dollar company, we absolutely cannot do it without our ecosystem and without having a very diverse ecosystem that all has different skills that can help us scale. Because again, Palo Alto does not want to be a services company, mm -hmm. right? Let's work with the people who are the best at that. When we think about the Deloitte's and Accenture's and the value they have within the end user base and our joint customer base, 
what a fantastic time to, to partner together and solve those boardroom challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really see the vision is that at the boardroom, we're building out a plan that's three to five years that's going to continue to increase their security posture. Because if we're not thinking, if we're not forward thinking like that, will be left behind because the bad actors are thinking about how they find the different areas to penetrate. They're getting so sophisticated, the bad yes. actors, the adversaries, they are well-funded, they're motivated. Ran the ransomware attack numbers in terms of the velocity, the complexity, yes. it's no longer, are we going to get hit, it's when. Yeah. Uh, big challenge for organizations acr across, I mean, really across an organization, regardless of industry. Are you guys having any conversations with boards in the partner organization to help align the board with the yeah. executive level and really not just have security as a board level initiative, but actually being able to execute a strategy. Yeah, and it, you, you nailed it, it's not an initiative. Because initiative to me means there's a beginning and an end, right? A strategy means there's going to be a comprehensive approach how you continue to improve. And we are very fortunate that a lot of our largest partners around the globe have that position within the boards where they are the trusted advisor. So what we're doing now is enabling them and giving them the skills so they can have a more comprehensive conversation around our platform approach, around the challenges. You know, BJ, I know who was with you earlier today, likes to say that the average customer he goes and sees has 50 to 70 disparate technologies within their environment. How do you manage that? How do you maintain it? How do you do renewals? Oh, and by the way, most likely the people who actually initially procured that aren't with you anymore. They're at a different company. So the need for a platform approach is there more so than ever, but the decision for the platform quite often has to come from the most senior levels within the organization. Because again, I'm going to go back to your, what was your chaos line that you said? And chaos is cash. Chaos is cash, <laughs> well also, chaos is job security. So if you're at, at the lower level within an organization, that chaos and that magic gives you a little job security. But that's a short term, long term, you really need to think about how you're protecting the environment holistically. So it is a boardroom decision down that we need to have. And, and you know, that chaos, the, the, the motivation for that piece that I wrote was from a, the criminal standpoint. Right. And then I was like, okay, but there's great opportunities for the technology industry. But, but I think that, you know, where we're headed, and when, when, wonder if I can get your thoughts on, thoughts on this, Carlos. We always talk about the boardroom. I think we're going now beyond it. Here I am. You know, I'm hypersensitive about my security. I got yeah. password managers, two-factor authentication. I don't want SMS-based two-factor authentication. I want my own authenticator. And that's still not enough. Yeah. I got air gaps, yeah. you know, for my crypto. I, you know, sure. and I'm super paranoid. My point is, I think the, the individuals are getting much more savvy yeah. about security. Why? Because we've all been hacked. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. when you lost your data in the, because you weren't backed up. You know, that never happens anymore. It's in the yeah. cloud or, you know, some people have multiple backups. Yeah. So it's, it, it's becoming a cultural trend beyond yes. the board. And it's because of the board where it said, hey, this is really important. And so I think it's not only top down, I think you're going to see bottom up and middle out. And the exciting part for Palo Alto Networks is, and, and maybe for you as well, is there any more exciting environment to talk about that's rapidly changing and constantly changing? You could come back next week and our conversation is going to change yeah. Yeah. as far as what we're doing. We constantly need to be thinking three steps ahead of where we're going to move and be flexible and dynamic enough to change. Yeah. And that's what's going to keep us ahead of the conversation. Yeah, there's no segment as dynamic. I mean, data is dynamic, but not as fast changing as cyber. I mean, because of the adversary, yeah. as you mentioned. I mean, so smart. So now they have open adversary ecosystems. I mean, the adversaries are building ecosystems, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's insane. I've got peers that uh -oh. are bad guys. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, right, right. Uh, uh, chaos is cash. <laughs> what's your favorite partner story that you think really demonstrates the value of the ecosystem that Palo Alto Networks has built? Yeah, so without sharing names, I'll talk about a, a large uh, US national partner that was very, uh, that was founded on a networking business and partnered with a very large networking company and built that business and was successful doing that. They wanted to pivot into the security space and very early on, they made a commitment to Palo Alto Networks to say, we're going to learn, we're going to invest, we're going to align with your sales force and we're going to work together. And right now, they are our largest partner globally and they grew 70% year over year. 
Wow. So think about that. This is not on a small base. We're talking about a half a billion dollars in, in revenue, growing at 70% year over year, because to your point earlier, it wasn't an initiative, it was a strategy and they're executing on the strategy. So I tell a lot of we call war stories like that to other partners that are looking to invest from different markets. It could be a large service provider that's you know, trying to transform themselves into a security player and talk about the, the potential of what it could be in, for their marketplace. And by the way, I say publicly quite often, we, Palo Alto Networks will be your most profitable relationship that you have because of the total addressable market that we're going after, because of the solutions that we bring to market, and because of the opportunity within the end users right now. And we're excited. I want to come back to the MSSP in that, in that context. So we've seen the rise of the MSSP, and particularly, you know, we were talking earlier, I think it was with Wendy that, uh, no, it was with CDW. Like 50% of the organizations in North America don't even have a SOC. Yeah. yeah. Right, so they need a service provider to come help right. them. So, you said, we, you don't want to be in the services business, right? You're a product company, mm -hmm. right? And that's, from a financial standpoint, that's phenomenal. You're roughly $50 billion market cap company. Let's, let's call it six billion in revenue. So that's a nice revenue multiple, mm -hmm. 8X, you know? And, and, and the market's down. So you're a 10X revenue multiple company. Typically, services companies are a 1X or a 2X. Are you seeing a change there where technology is giving these service providers operating leverage where they're able to scale, whether it's because of the cloud, because of the partnerships, the eco, what did you call it before, the peer-to-peer the -peer ecosystem? Yes, it's like yes. the gap fillers? Yes. Are, 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 do you see the economics of services changing? Yeah, from a baseline economic standpoint, not looking at the valuations, but let's look at it from a, an opportunity to be profitable at Palo Alto Networks. We know if you are just doing the transaction you have a certain range of margin that you're going to make in the opportunity. We know if you wrap services around it, you're going to get 3x to 4x that margin. We know that if it's managed services and there's life cycle management, you're talking 5x to 8x, that initial transaction. And by the way, it's recurring revenue for them. So if you think about it, if you just do a transaction, your only recurring revenue is a renewal. That's predictable, but it's not extremely profitable. Yeah. Now we're saying, the operating leverage you get is if you wrap that services and you're going to have an increased opportunity for greater margin and it's sticky. It's hard to replace a partner who's adding value to your team and in a lot of times, when you walk in the end user, you can't tell who the partner is and who the end user is because they are one team. That's value. Yes, and that's going to drive EBIT yep. for your partners and that's going to drive valuation. You know, you know, I want to come back to valuation, not to, not to ask you to that. comment, okay. but, but because I was, I predicted, I do my prediction post every year, and I predicted last year that we're going to see, you know, a spade of MSS, uh, MSSPs. I predicted you're going to see someone go public. Nobody's going public these days, but I still think it's a great business yeah. that's a, an untapped opportunity. It's not an 8X or a 10, it's not a software or marginal economics, sure. but it's really sticky super high value, yeah. and I think it has you know, long-term potential. Yeah, to your point, if we want to talk valuations for a second, let's look at what's happened to the marketplace over the last 12 to 18 months. The large majority of the non-public partners that we work with have taken on capital from private equity. Mm -hmm. The private equity that has come in has challenged them to go through a transformation. That transformation is, you, we need you to be services-led and that services value, because they believe there's going to, is going to be a great devout, greater valuation from that end, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to scale and grow and stay ahead of the market doing that. So, when we have conversations, when I have conversations, yes, I'm talking about the technology and the direction of the company, but I'm also in there as a consultant saying, where's the direction of your company? And how do we have this great platform, and how do we build it into your business and you wrap services around it? And those are the conversations that CEOs want to have when I'm sitting down with our partner CEOs. I'll bet. They don't want to talk about our product being better than someone else's product. They want to talk about the direction and health of their business. Yeah, it's their business. That's a business discussion. A business discussion. And they're thinking about, okay, what's my five-year strategic plan? Because right. they got to make bets. Yeah. They got to bet on a platform that they can add value to Yes. that creates that flywheel effect, and they got a bet on your ecosystem as well. Correct, you know? correct, absolutely. Good to be the leader. It's you good know? to be a leader, and you know, I'm sure as you've heard a few times, we believe that uh, economic headwinds are going to favor the market leaders, and economic headwinds are going to favor the platform approach, 
So we're going in more aggressive with our partner community than ever before, and there's just so much energy and excitement. I feel like I keep on using that term over and over again, but that's really what we walk away with. Last question for you is we have about 30 seconds left. A lot of momentum in the partner ecosystem as you've described eloquently. What's next? What's next? What's next? Yeah, so when I, I rolled out the strategy for what's next, and what it is is a foundational platform that is going to allow flexibility for the partners and for them to decide where they want to invest and it can be in new areas. It can be I want to align closer with the cloud service providers. It could be I want to build a managed services business. Can you help us do this? It, it could be I want to go through and I want to drive greater penetration into geographical areas we haven't been before. So again, we're almost acting as a consultant, looking at what they're going from the direction and building a program and a platform where we can grow and work with them. It's exciting, it's fun. It's great. Highly Good collaborative. Vision. Highly collaborative, Very highly cool collaborative. Stuff, Carol. Thank you for joining us on the program, giving Thank us the lay of the land me. on the partner program, the ecosystem, better together, what you guys are doing, and ultimately how it benefits the end user customer. We really appreciate your insights. Excellent, thank you. Thank you so much, appreciate All right, it. All right, our pleasure. For our guest and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.